Right. Hey, everyone. I'm clear. Welcome to Ruin Chance Power Creep 0 0.7. So the next update for the data pack. What does it entail? Well, that's why we're here. We'll go over everything nice and briefly, right? So there are a few changes. Let me grab this. This makes it a lot easier, right? So play stats. That was the feature for this. Since then, I have worked on what power does, right? So depending on your stats, your current power level is calculated as X. And depending on that, right, when you reach certain thresholds, certain elite mobs will now spawn in the world. Now, also depending on difficulty, which is another modifier, depending on how long you stay in one area, certain packs of mobs will eventually spawn. I say eventually, because I'm, I'm telling you a feature that I'm working on, but not in this. So disregard it <laughs> or be excited. Okay. But along with that, what I've also done is I've added in uh, temporary stats, right? So for instance, if we were to tag ourselves, hopefully this is correct, add fatigue. Hopefully I've done that right. Yes, there we go. So because we're fatigued, our stats are now in the negative because they're already quite low, right? So our current power is also really bad. But if we tag ourselves again, it'll go down even more, right? And you can build up fatigue and that will wear through all your stats and eventually we'll get to negative ranges. I just lost a uh, uh, heart, right? That's why we took some damage. But don't worry, all you have to do to change this is rest, which I cannot do because it's not night. Let's fix that, time set night, right? So if we rest, our fatigue will recover. Now, unfortunately, a scoreboard system doesn't detect when a player actually rests, but just when they get into bed. So you can cheese it, you can just sleep in a bed, right? There will also be other ways to clear fatigue. I want to implement food suggestions by, uh, uh, sorry, the words again crossed my head. Fire, Lunacraft, I think it was the correct way. Ellie. <laughs> but yeah, so their suggestion were to, to make a lot more foods usable and perfectly we can tie it to the stat system. So again, another feature that will be next, right? At least that's on my to-do list. It'll either be bosses or this, right? Will be craftable foods to relieve fatigue and also apply temporary bonuses. So for instance, uh, I actually don't know what the opposite of fatigue is. There is one, I don't know what the tag is specifically, but what we can do is instead go scoreboard players add us. Uh, if we go positive, right, agility, and we put on 200, right? We're slightly faster, you know, we'll max it out, why not? Put 1600, right? So that's maxed, our agility is now at 100%. But again, if we were to rest, this will get reset because it is temporary. So there will be ways to temporarily augment your stats, but again, the idea is fatigue will build up and you'll have to rest and then it'll be cleared and you'll be back to whatever your innate or, or current stats are, right? But onto the mobs. Now, I do want to set up a little containment thing so they don't go bonkers, but there are nine different pairs of mobs, right? So all of them are mounted mobs, each with one unique extra ability. So they'll have their normal move sets according to the hostile mob abilities or neutral, some are neutral. And after that, they will have one extra elite ability that they can use. If they get affected by the difficulty, they'll have more. If they're affected by the season, they'll have more as well, right? There's lots of ways for mobs to gain extra abilities, but I will set it up and then we will go through the nine different packs. Okay, so showing off their abilities might be a little bit more complicated than I thought, but nonetheless, let's get to it. So we've got a few things set up. Uh, this will just perpetually stun them, right? So stun is uh, one of the status effects applicable in the game, right? And so we'll just make sure that they stay stunned. So for instance, they won't move. And here we have our first dangerous foe, right? So a dangerous foe has spawned. And as you can see, he's an enderman with some endermites. Now it's actually better when he's aggroed. I can't show, because then they're actually perfectly hidden in his head. And I think it works a lot better, but we unfreeze him for starters. Should start moving around, there we go. Uh, we can force him to use an ability, which is cropped bile, right? You might have seen the park flex. It's so hard, because again, they move around. I don't want them to move around, but again, if I do barriers, but as you can see, he's basically spewing up tiny endermites, right? Which can be very annoying, very devastating. The endermite itself does have its own ability, but we have the enderman expels several small parasites, right? So fun, fun. And then once you do actually defeat him, if I can do it without knocking him off the edge. Again, they are nice and tanky because they are meant to be elites. Then we also get a few parasitic endermites spawning. Now they do have slightly enhanced stats, right? So they are slightly different than normal endermites. So be warned, again, all these enemies are meant to be kind of dangerous. But 
and then aside up next we have an illager goat fun uh, i will clear all the entities just to be safe all right we'll put the stun back on but here we have a vindicator on a nice supersized goat right so we're using the new scale attribute huge should be uh his ability is a lot worse to show off uh i think it is under my commander hard because if i just set it to uses all entities they'll all lose the ability but his is dun, 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 command which would force all other hostile mobs nearby to use their ability so it automatically procs their abilities which Again, can be quite devastating. Using the actual hostile abilities is so much easier than the elites because there's a slimmer chance. But yeah, so he's a vindicator on a goat. If you're up for it, beat him without beating the goat. You have to jump attack quite a lot. Again, super tanky. And you'll be able to steal the goat in itself, which again has its own style of ability. Uh, in fact, I think it is under bully, right? For a bully goat. And I believe I was smart enough to keep the tags the same, right? So if we do bully, again, I'd like to unstun them so we can actually see. Luckily, though, we can actually see it. Yeah. It gives the, the goat a warp, unfortunately. Because he does get hit himself. <laughs> I should probably make him immune so he doesn't actually disable his mount. Although, again, his mount isn't a big deal. Uh, I would assume he comes after me. That's why we test as well. Hello, actually, I'm not quite sure. He's stunned. Yeah, he's able to hit. Stun is basically no AI. Yeah, all right. He can one shot. Uh, that's not good. <laughs> Again, they're, they're tiered and they are... Yeah. Difficult. Before he comes to me. All right, so be warned. That. Supersized Vindicator. I mean, he's quite massive, right? He's bigger than us. So they will terrorize, terrorize your, your villagers. Ah, uh, God. I can't remember the progression of my head, but I do know the Illager elites are uh, the final tier. So you should be a lot stronger than I am now and properly have equipment. All right, but we'll turn the stun back on and we'll mainly look at them. I mean, you know what the easier way for me to show their abilities is just to make myself use them, right? So we also, aside from Illager Goat, we have Illager Vex, right? Which is an evoker on a supersized Vex. So that's gonna be fun. Just flying about. I'm curious, because obviously Vexes can phase through walls. So I wonder what happens to the Evoker. Yeah, you know what? That'll be easier. We will show off all the elite mobs, and then I will show you the abilities on behalf of myself, right? So after that, we have Illager on Wolf, and that is a Illager on a supersized wolf. Again, another, another cool objective for you, if you're interested. Get rid of the Pillager, tame the wolf, right? After that, we have do, 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 infested skeleton, right? Which is a silverfish infested skeleton, right? Pretty simple. Again, super sized mostly, high stats, so it will take a lot of hits unless you're properly trained. Same with the silverfish. They're floating right now because they have no AI, which is weird because no AI also disables gravity, if you didn't know. Literally disables everything. Uh, we'll also do time, set day, but how many have we done? Four or five, right? So there's actually not that many more. We have Skeleton Horse, right? Which is a decked out stray on a Skeleton Horse. Again, tame it, have a supersized horse for yourself. Same with the, oh, that was the wrong command. That was time set, that's why. Then with the other one, which is going to be a, oh yeah, I have to skip. All right, the Zombie Horse, right? So we have a zombie on a zombie horse. Again, uh, I will also note the wolf abilities, the horse abilities, uh, beneficial, mainly in the case of the wolf, if you've tamed the wolf, right? So all these, if you want to, again, collect and hunt them and keep them for yourselves, I have thought about that, and they do have reasons to do just that, right? So you will get, every now and then, a special proc. He shouldn't drop his weapon. Well, I suppose it's fine if he drops his weapon. Uh, you, the horses do have a special proc for you, if you're their rider, right? After that, we have Spider Swarm. She is a mother spider and a tiny little cave spider, right? Yeah, we can go back, we can go big and small with the scale. <laughs> so watch out for that. And then the final one is going to be doo -doo -doo, Zolgon Boar, which is a, that uh, was going to be a zombified, but then I thought range was better, right? So Zoglin and a Bogged. Fun little combination, just thought rotting, right? 
All right, their abilities. So much easier for me to show off as me. It's nice and simple. All I have to do is go function, rune chance, and I'm glad I did it this way because basically what I can do in the future is I can give you items, right? That will allow you to use all of the abilities. So if we go to the elites and then we go to power mobs, right? This is the alpha wolf's ability, which is dominance, which does affect me because I'm not a wolf, right? So a howl, some shriek effects, and our mobs would get stunned. Us as players, I don't, there's no way to switch off your AI, so it's just debilitating, right? Weakness and slowness, so the wolf's presence stuns all foes nearby. The wolf was tamed, slightly different, right? Keep that in mind. After the wolf, we have the boar, which is unruly strength, which gets you resistance or strength. Again, in the case of the zoglin, the zoglin would get resistance and strength. Then we have the goats, which is hard head, which is basically a ram, right? That's why we're moving forward every time we proc it, and it would stun. Jerks, uh, the Ram's quick jerk stuns even its rider. Probably gonna change that, right? So that the Vindicator doesn't try to off its own Ram. And then we have, well, Corrupt is the Enderman, right? Which is Bile. Uh, they are floating because they are still stunned. We'll do that one again, right? We'll get rid of them. But I'll basically throw up some Endermites, right? Burp sound particles, the works. Then we have Fungal, which is spreading plague which uh, is very, very dangerous, I should know. Uh, we'll do it with herd mentality. All right, I'm going to go to villagers. So plague is one of the most dangerous effects because it is a ever, ever, a never ending spreading plague, right? So as long as there's mobs that can be infected. So don't let this thing near villagers, otherwise you have an epidemic. We have spreading plague, right? Which looks harmless, but everyone nearby was just affected by the plague. It's gonna make them run around and then it's gonna spread. So the next tick, will hit even more villagers, and it will just cause an endless epidemic, right? Is slow acting though, right? But there we go. And you basically just have to, to get rid of them. I will probably also put in a cure for the plague, right? Something I've never done, but fun times. Then we have generic. So they all have access to this ability, which is just deadly presence. So a mob bellows empowering all hostile mobs nearby. Uh, it will just buff all the hostile mobs in the area, right? Make more challenging because again i do want to uh, incorporate them to spawn in packs rather than just singularly they currently just spawn singularly but i will add in different ways for them to spawn in packs again there are lots of different modifiers and, and places for me to interject their summon command then we have icaster which is feasting fangs which will apply chomp which is a status effect to all players nearby and it's basically periodically you'll get chomped on basically you just have to keep moving right you can outrun them uh if i wasn't an f5 but if you stay on the spot in survival, you will get constantly chomped. Eventually it will wear off, right? So don't worry too much, but you'll basically have to keep moving. I will just remove it myself to speed things along. Move, chop. Perfect. All right. Then after the evoker, we have eye commander, which again, commands all hostile mobs in the area to, to force use an ability, right? And you know what? I should be able to, because I do want to test this myself. Uh, give me a husk since husks don't burn, right? So if we do I command, uh, there's only a chance that's a problem. Hmm. That one might need work, in all honesty. But should be forcing them to use their ability. In fact, you know what? Let me look into that one quickly. The dummy I am, I did S instead of E, right? But if we come close enough to them and use it, there we go. All husks use pocket sand, right? So it will just roll whatever their abilities are. Deadly bite, they bit each other, actually. Yeah, that's funny. Yeah, and then they have to be close enough. Again, th there's still the normal chances, right? So every time a mob actually procs its ability, it's not guaranteed that it will use anything. And if you have luck, there's a chance that it will uh, turn into a lucky effect, which is actually a mechanic I've never properly explained, right? But we'll keep going. All right, after that, we have Eye Marksman, uh, which won't work on me, actually, because... NBT for entities is different, right? They use main hand instead of selected item, but it will basically force load a loaded crossbow into the hand of the pillager, and that loaded crossbow will have a random enchant. So that is kind of a scary one, right? It will allow them to shoot nice and quickly. Then we have infestation, which shoots out a bunch of silverfish. So this is the infested skeleton one, right? Uh, I do want to clear them as well. Oh, that's wrong one. All right, a few more. So then we have, actually a couple more. We have Nesta, which is the big mother spider. So it will spawn web and it will spawn some spiderlings. Then the spiderlings themselves 
we'll skip forward. All right, you can do web weave, which will cause all mobs in the area to get weaving and poison. All right, so if there's a bunch of like passive mobs or weak mobs, it will cause a lot of cobwebs, right? And if it's a pack and you're you're dealing with a bunch of mobs, it will cause a lot of cobwebs. So fun. Uh, and then we have the steed, which we can do, tough bones, which doesn't work because I'm not riding myself. So it affects the rider, right? That's why it's popping up above my head, because if you were on a horse, it would, that's where you would be positioned, right? So what does it do? As the skeletal steed strengthens the bones of its rider or if absent itself. Then we have duh, 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 summon, which is the giant vex which basically summons a smaller Vex somewhere. Did you go into the ground? I feel like you might have went into the ground. Yeah, you went straight into the ground. All right, so nice little tiny Vex. You can easily get rid of it. Uh, they all have access to Soul Division, right? The ones it summons are still considered elites, meaning it can, again, spawn endlessly. So you do want to really clean up all the ads. After that, we have the D Knights, which is Oozing Cleave, which uh, let's see if we can actually use it. Oh, not close enough. I guess it doesn't work on spiders. That's interesting. Hmm. Nope. Yeah. No, was that you or me? That was you, I think. Try again. Alright, I gotta look into that. It's giving me oozing, but it's not doing damage to anything. I might have set it so it only does damage to players. Right? Sometimes I gate things so it only interacts with players. Sometimes I gate things so it interacts with everything. Nice and simple, though. I can actually look at it while we're here. Uh, do, 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 yeah, all right. So it will give any entity it hits oozing, but it will only damage players. That a good enough change? Hmm, I feel like I want it to do AoE damage, right? Just damage everything in front of itself. Uh, I can fix that. Type equals hashtag rune chance. Or let's see. Let's see if that feels a little better. Again, it would be nice to give the player access to this. I mean, I could easily give you a sword that can proc. Oozing Cleave or something like that, right? Let's see. Oh. I did set it to now target them, which means maybe the positioning is off, which is also another issue I run into sometimes. Uh, also, why am I doing it that way? I literally have that. Oh, but everything is oozing. It's fine. All right, let's try it. The villager, no, you're not a villager. One more time. Villager, and then yeah. see it has oozing, which is correct, but it's still not doing the damage. Yeah, I wonder why that is. Uh, I will look into that and tweak stuff, but it will damage you at the very least. At least I hope it would. <laughs> All right, and then I think we're on the lucky last. Yeah, Z Steed, which is unruly speed. Right, the zombie steed prepares itself to dash, so the zombie. Steed would give itself speed and jump boost, right? So that's probably a nice perk to have on a horse. And again, I, I do want to make these abilities crockable through items. I think that's a, a cool interaction, right? Imagine you had a wolf and a special whistle or something, or a goat horn maybe, right? And you used it and you commanded the wolf to use X ability. I mean, uh, we'll might as well. Go on a tangent, and if I go to neutral, we can find what wolf abilities. Wolf has bite which would make them lunge forward and bite something. Now, which gives weakness to everything nearby, and pack tempo, which would give speed to all allies, right? Again, if it's tamed, they will affect yourself. I can't tame myself, or I can't give myself the flag to act as I'm tamed. But yeah, I think that'd be a cool idea to add items to actually force trigger abilities. But again, just a sort of brief overview of the, the mobs that I've added, or mobs that I've tweaked. They're borderline custom mobs, but they're not, right? They're using already existing assets. Oh, <clears throat> that was going to be a bad cough. <clears throat> ever, ever get that, like, we swallow dry saliva? Anyway, I think that's good enough. We'll leave it there. I will tweak and test, all right? Which is also another important reason for these videos. Ah, hope you enjoyed. See ya.